Today was a great day for the former patients um, of Dr. Nikita Levy. And we're very gratified, we're very pleased and happy uh, that we just came from the fairness hearing where Judge Cox has finally approved the settlement for our clients in the amount of $190 million. So we're very happy, ladies. Yes. Happy. We should be. <laughs> you know, it's been uh, approximately 20 months uh, of a very difficult time for our clients, a very difficult time for their lawyers at times. This is a very challenging case, a very stressful case for everyone involved. Some people would say it's a gut-wrenching case. But here we are with the $190 million settlement, and we can start to heal our community now. Our clients can begin to get some closure. We have learned that the former patients of this doctor were victimized, and they were exploited, and they were betrayed, and they suffered a breach in trust not only for the institution, but for the medical profession as a whole, and a breach of faith. And in our interviewing these people and getting to know our clients and getting to understand what this case is really about, we learned about the very significant injuries, damages, and trauma that they suffered as a result of his conduct. Now. Today, with this final approval, our clients can start to move forward. There will be a sophisticated allocation team that will be available to them, consisting of a board-certified forensic psychiatrist, a PhD psychologist, and other professionals who will evaluate each and every plaintiff in this class. And then, after doing so, they will place these injured women in one of four categories that the allocation team has constructed. So it is the medical team which is running this allocation, and it is the medical team which constructed the four categories of damages and will evaluate the plaintiffs. Now, we will do that as promptly as possible, uh, and we will start as soon as possible. We have to wait the requisite 30-day appeal period from this order that the judge passed today, and the $190 million will be funded 14 days after that. So if there are no appeals, it will be 44 days from today the $190 million will be placed in an interest-bearing account that will be controlled by uh, an administrator who will run a qualified settlement fund. That's a fund established by our Treasury regulations into which the $190 million go. And no money will be spent without the approval of the court and without the administrator dispersing the funds. That's how it will work, and the money will earn interest. I can truly tell you all today that this result is truly historic, groundbreaking, unprecedented, extraordinary, and we're very proud, all of us, yes, we are. and our steering committee who are back here, all of the lawyers, on the steering committee have worked so diligently, so hard, have faced so many risks and so many challenges in this case, to have finally arrived at our destination, at our goal, to be successful for these clients is extraordinarily gratifying for us. We are told that this is the largest single perpetrator sexual abuse case in our country's history that these ladies received today. 
So our clients have stood up, and they're standing up now. And they fought back. And I have to tell you, over the 20 months that our steering committee has worked hard with Howard and myself, they've communicated well with us. And we've done our best to communicate with them. They have spurred us on. They fought back, we fought back, and now they are recognized as a very, very serious force in this city and all other cities in the United States. Folks, we have sent a very loud and clear message today across these United States. This conduct on the part of this physician is not going to be tolerated in Baltimore, Maryland, her sister states, not in this country. And it's a great day for women's rights. And it's particularly gratifying looking around and seeing the world we live in today. We don't have to recount other recent history. But this kind of conduct has to stop. And the way to stop it is what these ladies accomplished today. We're faced with people who trivialized what happened here. They trivialized what Dr. Levy did, and they trivialized the damages. Well, after all, he's just taking secret pictures. Who cares? Well, we proved that this conduct will not be tolerated. And we proved that these damages will not be trivialized. Not today, and not for the future, from this day forward. I think that we spoke loudly and clearly. I think we've made our point. I think we have been extraordinarily successful for our clients. After all, that's what a lawyer wants to do. That's what we try to do. And every so often, you get a chance in life, folks, to really make a difference, to really give people a voice, give people power, and provide needed, necessary, and fair compensation for what happened here. And thanks to the steering committee and these wonderful clients, this is a representation of our clients. We have between 8,000 and 9,500 uh, who have vigorously supported this settlement. Uh, we are extremely proud and gratified to be here. Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask while we're congregated here? Yes. Can you describe, um, you interviewed or actually talked to 4,000 women. Have you identified all of the 8,000 plus? Or? Yes. Um, throughout the eight law firms that are involved in our steering committee, um, we interviewed 4,000 or more. Uh, the Shakur firm, my firm, interviewed approximately 2,000. And the purpose for that is as Howard described. We want to get to know our clients, and we want to get to know the modus operandi of Dr. Levy. We learned an awful lot of pattern behavior. So this man was not doing one thing with one client patient another thing with another patient, there are patterns of his conduct that we discovered through the course of these uh, investigations, if you will, interviews. And we wanted to get a good idea, a good feeling, a good gestalt of what the damages were across the entire patient population. After that, when we engaged the services of the psychiatrist and psychologist and they came down and trained our female teams to do the interviews, they reconstructed a new interview form that was more, let's just say, uh, consolidated, and it was one form for all, instead of proprietary interviews that all of the eight firms had done previously. They coded them to a computer. They trained our female paralegals and other staff members on how to properly interview, uh, and then we went ahead and re-interviewed approximately 500 of those women our clients, in order to categorize and, uh, the damages that they suffered and do some scientific studies with respect to uh, the injuries. What about these other four or 5,000 women? Have they, do they need to get in touch with you? Yeah, here's, here's how this will work. 
they have been identified. They have all registered with our claims administrator, which is called the Heffler Company. So there are specialized companies that do these things. They're registered. Um, we are trying to eliminate duplications now because as you can well imagine with the excitement of all of this, we have some of our uh, clients registering once, twice, three times, and then some of their brilliant lawyers like ourselves are registering them too. And so now we have to reverse engineer this and get all the duplicates. I'm sorry about that, get all the duplications out, and we estimate there are approximately 8,000 to 9,500 active participants in this class seeking possible compensation. And the team, the allocation team, will come in and will evaluate them all. What we did in our study was to get a statistical, statistically reliable study so we could place uh, patients in different categories of damages and then we would have a, a, an appropriate study with appropriate percentage of injuries and damages to present in mediation. And what ballpark estimate are these women looking at? What's the range of damages they could receive? The range of damages has not been established yet. It will be by the, 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 this allocation team after it is determined how many people are in each category. And then it will all be balanced mild, moderate, severe, there's one other category in there, then numbers will be ascribed, assigned to each category, and then each person will know what they will receive. However, nothing will be dispersed until the entire allocation plan for compensation is submitted to Judge Cox, who will review the entire plan, and he has to approve it before anybody gets any, any funding. But the money, don't forget, this is important for these kind of numbers, will be in an interest-bearing account. And once the judge decides, and it's his decision, what fees and expenses our steering committee receives, the balance of that money, earning the interest, will be paid to our clients with the exception of the other administrative fees it will take to allocate the funds with the allocation team and the other experts we have to pay. But they get all the benefit of that money and the interest. Any other questions? I want to thank you all for coming and attending and sharing this time with us. Congratulations, ladies.